Okay, uh, this is actually a component of a light bulb. Uh, it's uh, a module from a company called Soul Semiconductor. It's known as the uh, AC Rich 2. Uh, it's part of a class of uh, sub-assemblies for uh, AC LEDs, are known as. Now, uh, the LEDs aren't AC. Uh, what refers to the fact that this module accepts 120 volts uh, AC directly without any other components. Uh, there's no transformers, resistors, or capacitors in the assembly, just simply a, a semiconductor here. Now, it's interesting because uh, the CFL market um, degraded to the point where most bulbs uh, were built for the lowest possible cost, and um, I'm sure the LED bulb market go the same way. This is a pretty good example of what might happen uh, because one can't imagine a simpler circuit. Uh, in fact, when you look at the app note uh, in terms of what needs to be put on that bulb, um, it's truly just simply this uh, symbol, single semiconductor. Uh, the string of LEDs is required in an AC input, so uh, as simple as one could make. So to give a good sense of uh, how simple this assembly is as compared to a more conventional uh, approach, this is a uh, obviously a GU10 uh, 110 volt um, bulb, and uh, we'll just take it apart to uh, see what's inside the base here. Now this black component uh, is of course the power system AC and uh, DC out, and then of course there's the the, the mid array. Uh, so essentially uh, the value proposition of this particular approach is that this single integrated circuit replaces uh, this entire assembly here. Okay, let's talk about flicker. Now obviously that little assembly has absolutely no capacitors and of course this is the weak spot probably with this kind of approach. I put the emitter array on a little stand here and obviously it's shining against the solar cell and um, the solar cell of course converts light to electricity and uh, that will result back in a waveform on the oscilloscope. Uh, and you can see very high, uh, peak to peak 1.6 volts. Uh, this is of course the greatest flicker I've actually measured in a long time. Uh, and no surprise, right, this is the big trade-off. Okay, let's uh, talk about dimmability. Uh, the module of course uh, is off right now. Uh, I'm using my uh, fancy uh, LED based dimmer. Um, so it's low setting. You can see about half the array turns on and then as I bring the dimmer up uh, it does get brighter then turns on the second part of the array. Uh, and then reaches full brightness. Uh, so actually, full marks, uh, this one uh, truly does seem like a, a dimmable module. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the, the power factor of the bulb. Uh, it's um, it just being read here on a what, kilowatt meter. You can see the numbers bouncing around. Uh, the dish sheet says it has a high power factor, uh, but the meter, of course, is struggling. Uh, it doesn't look like it's close to unity, and uh, it's uh, somewhere actually fairly low. Uh, and I guess that must be the other trade-off here that uh, power factors can't be close to unity without any additional circuits other than a uh, semiconductor. Okay, well, that was a relatively brief look. Um, I couldn't actually find a commercial bulb which is using this sole semiconductor part, so if anyone who is listening to this channel knows where one could find such a thing, I certainly would like to hear from you. Uh, clearly, the substrate's been designed to fit into a, a GU-10 or MR-16 type body. Um, now, as expected, the, the flicker is fairly high in the bulb, the power factor is fairly low. Uh, dimmability is quite good. Uh, but more importantly, uh, it's, it might be an interesting endpoint for the LED industry. Uh, CFL certainly seem to have devolved into the lowest cost possible cost product. And this is really is a good example of how that, uh, that could play out in the LED industry, uh, where you just don't put down a single semiconductor and no other components. Uh, I will tell.